What if I told you I could summon a war? I, I can't actually yet. Matt's got a copy of Summoner Wars and it's not here yet. I was just trying to manifest. <gasps> <laughs> what if I invited you to summon wars? How many wars? Summon wars. Seriously, take a closer look at this box. How many cool wizards do you see? One, two, three, four, five, six. Some of them are upside down. Are they gonna be okay? Of course they are. They're wizards. Summoners, I don't know. What I do know is that this is the brand new Summoner Wars second edition. A two player game, Shut Up and Sit Down, first reviewed back in 2011, before the invention of shaving. I'm thrilled to see this game return in a new, more beautiful, slightly more complex second edition, because it is a dead good game of wizards dueling to the death. Imagine something like Magic the Gathering, if Magic had spent more time attending parties at school and less mathematical olympiads. Now, you and your opponent... Uh, that's creepy. Uh, you and your opponent are gonna pick a deck that is your summoner. You're gonna set that summoner up in their starting formation and then you're good to go because that's set up complete and you are ready to sink into a tactics game as colorful and kinetic as a ball pit. Like madcap dueling game Unmatched, which I gave a positive review to last year, Summoner Wars wants to be collectible without being demanding. So here's how you play. Going back and forth between your opponent, each of you are gonna take a turn that goes, start a turn, summon, move, build, attack, magic, draw. Repeat back and forth until someone's summoner is dead, at which point you presumably bury them or what's left of them, and then you're the winner. Let's look at that turn structure in a little more detail. At the start of your turn, you're gonna be holding five cards. First, you can summon any soldiers you're holding next to your gates, paying their cost in magical energy. Next, you can move up to three people, two squares each, but they cannot move through one another, which is where you learn that one of Summoner War's ancestors is the humble sliding block puzzle. In the build phase, you can build any of the extra gates contained in your deck, and then in the attack phase, up to three units can attack with this many dice. Units with the sword symbol can clobber adjacent enemies, roll this many dice and do one damage for each sword you roll, which are on five sides of the dice, which is juicy and generous. While units with the bow symbol can fire in a straight line up to three spaces away. But bows are only on four sides of the dice. During all of this carnage, every enemy card you kill, you get one magical energy. Finally, in the magic phase, you may discard any number of cards from your hand for one magical energy apiece. And then you end your turn by drawing back up to five cards. There's nothing too sexy about any of this yet. So allow me to introduce two rather juicy and delicious additional elements of Summoner Wars that you and your opponent are gonna be trying to display dominance over. This was the bit in the script where I was gonna take out two strawberries and then when I said the word display dominance, I was gonna crush the strawberries with my hand. I found out just now, my wife has eaten those strawberries. So uh, these are potato gnocchi. <laughs> the first wrinkle of Summoner Wars is that your summoner is actually the best unit in the game with pots of health, decent attack and a cool special power. And this immediately makes Summoner Wars a tense and interesting game of how dare you deep probe your summoner into enemy territory to best make use of them and maintain momentum. Think of it as if your king in chess was also your queen and she could take an absolute leathering before passing out. And the second wrinkle is even better. This trim little 30 card deck you start the game with is all the magic you get, ever. So if you've got no cards left to draw, you stop drawing. If you've got no units left to summon, you stop summoning. And your summoner can burn through this deck in just six turns if you're really pushing them to the max. You know how most cinematic fights end with one character looking inside themselves and discovering the strength they have deep in there? 
the Summoner Wars tends to end with one Summoner or both of you looking inside themselves and discovering that they are now friendless and spiritually destitute. All of which makes Summoner Wars like the jet ski of tactics games. It is so easy to just get on board and start thrashing about and having fun, but there are oh so many ways to end up flung out of the vehicle and end up drowning in the ocean of your own bottomless idiocy. Your first games of Summoner Wars will, if you're like me, see you accidentally blocking your own summoning spots and attack paths with your own units, reducing your advance to that of a moderately tactical toddler tripping over their own shoes, and soon you'll start to realise that every single soldier's special ability isn't just keeping the game fresh, it's offering the opportunity for you to get really, really clever. But no matter your skill level, Summoner Wars tends to remain exciting. Partially because the turns are so big that who's in control will often change from moment to moment. One minute you'll be in control, then your opponent will take their turn and they'll be in control. But also because no matter how smart you are, you still get to roll these fat handfuls of d6. Wow, that was awesome. Um, Summoner Wars is not a beer and pretzels game. It's more like a tactics game that has had exactly one beer, where the dice rolls tend to be quite predictable, but every so often they surprise you and have one of you or the other going, ah! where, for example, you might think you're definitely going to kill a unit, and this time, oh, you don't, and now it's still active, or you take a shot at a summoner and you do just a little bit more damage than you were expecting, which causes your opponent to retreat a little bit faster than they were planning to. Now, lots of dueling games have good moment-to-moment -moment tactical gameplay. What makes a great dueling game, and what Summoner Wars has in spades, is this idea that you're on a journey together with multiple acts in each game. By burning through your deck and playing big bruises, you have a hope of taking the fight to your opponent, ripping down their gates, compressing the geography that they have to play with so summoning and moving is harder. And you might have 10, 15 minutes of really bringing the fight to your opponent, followed by another 10 or 15 minutes of them just keeping you at bay, using the fact that you're on their side of the board to play more efficiently, to only summon units when they need them, only play events when they have to. And at that moment of the game, you might realize you're burning through this deck too quickly. If this game is like fencing, this deck is like your fence's stamina. And when you start burning through it too fast, if you're not really bringing pain to your opponent, you gotta ask yourself, oh, should I keep up this pressure? Is that how I win? Or do I back off and try and take a breath before I pancake into the end game of Summon Wars with no cards? But maybe I shouldn't get too deep into the strategic weeds here when the real core thrill of Summoner Wars is Maybe not the game, but simply all the different summoners and decks and play styles there are to try, all the different matchups there are to explore. It strikes me as so weird that the tabletop scene in general is obsessed with asymmetry, like uh, the recent game Merchant's Cove, which we talked about on episode 140 of the Shut Up and Sit Down podcast, a game where everyone runs different shots. I get it, asymmetry in tabletop games is absolutely awesome. It's so much fun playing a slightly different game to your opponent. But so many of the people who want asymmetry in board games seem to have forgotten or willfully ignore the fact that card games are a supernaturally successful example of asymmetry. And Summoner Wars 2nd Edition is no different. Take Svara of the Polar Dwarves. She's looking for a partner for a cozy night in. She turns Summoner Wars into a more literal sliding block puzzle because she doesn't just have gates as structures. She has living gates and also parapets, all of which can be slid around by her, moved on ice flows, or even turned into high velocity battering rams. Sarah is a little more my type. She's looking for a close friendship. Her vanguards play the long game with all sorts of healing and protective spells that mean they play a bit like the Spartans at Thermopylae. They just need to hold on to that end game. Even more my style is Rhett Talus, the necromancer with the cool hat and the big mouth who's looking for unflinching loyalty. He plays fast and loose with cultists to explode when they die, spells that let you hurt soldiers to bring in fresh soldiers, and units and events that get better the more death occurs. Basically, you're ruining yourself with an eye to becoming even more ruinous. The opposite of Rectalis explosive style is Abua Shi of the Savannah Elves. Abua plays around with an obnoxious secondary economy of boosts. Units boost themselves, they boost one another, these old dudes shunt boosts around, and these boosts all do different things. What's happening? I don't know. But Abua just cast the spell that gives two units one another's boosted abilities, so it's probably gonna suck. Even more annoying than this is Takulu of the Breakers, who's looking for a weak mind to dominate. 
She can mimic, move, stupefy, and even take control of her opponent's units. And finally, we have Sneaks. Sneaks is probably just looking for a hot meal. Since almost all of Sneaks' goblins cost zero, you're going to have to fight basically all of them on your way to the bottom of Sneaks' deck. And Sneaks can swap position with any of them. Also, Sneaks has a champion called Smeg, and I've decided not to comment on that at all. Get out of town! It's just really good. It's good looking, it plays great, it's simple to learn, it's hard to master. This is the point in the video where I'd name criticisms, but I, I don't know, what do you want from me? Um, if I'm being super picky, it feels a bit old-fashioned to have a turn structure where first one player does all the thinking and summons and moves and attacks and casts spells, while their opponent sits twiddling their nips for minutes on end. But also, I couldn't get the most out of this game because I, I kept beating people. It really kind of demands players who are of similar skill level. So unless you have an opponent who's like your exact match... <clears throat> well, where was I? Um, the good news is that if you want to try Summoner Wars 2nd Edition, you have so many options. There is right now a free online demo on Plaid Hat's web implementation of Summoner Wars. You can also kick them a few dollars for an account on that website so you can just play the game online with strangers or your friends. That's mostly how I've been playtesting this game. It's great. Also, while in this review, I've been talking about the Summoner Wars Master Set, which comes with six summoners. Um, you don't have to absorb the hog in its totality with this box. In this sum- what, that, what sentence was that? That was weird. Stay in the review. Um, this summer, Plaid Hat are releasing the first of Summoner Wars' new starter sets, which contain just two summoners at a lower price point. I think we can look forward to the Swamp Orcs and the Phoenix Elves in that set, which I've played online. They're both really good. They're as good as any other factors in this game, but obviously it's a starter set. They're not those more advanced or more difficult summoners that I personally was hoping for. Also, I sincerely hope that uh, we will see some of the absolutely mad summoners that were in Summoner Wars First Edition. There were some super weird dwarves and a chaos faction, I seem to remember. So that's good, you know. Um, summoner, I mean, uh, shut up and sit down. <sighs> oh, recommend Zaya. I guess. Silly Quins, he's forgotten to do the alternative recommendations. He mentioned it already. What a pro. But Unmatched is another terrific looking and collectible two player dueling game, although it plays with three and four as well. But it's a whole lot quicker, simpler and sillier. Look, I set up a three way match between Little Red Riding Hood, Buffy and Beowulf! Does everyone remember that episode of Angel where Angel was a puppet? Super problematic. But if you want a two-player game that's less simple, less accessible, more expensive, more long, and uh, actually just as silly as Summoner Wars, definitely take a look at Mage Wars. A deeply over-the-top game where players cast their spells from a profoundly plastic, yet still somehow cool, spellbook. Very cool game that. And, oh. <clears throat> um. Oh, sorry, that was. Um. <clears throat> we have other videos you can watch. Um. Sorry. Uh, bear with me. Hi, Matt. Amazing puppet. Really nice craftsmanship. Thing is, I don't know if I have room for it in my flat, so I was wondering if I could send it back to you. No, I do like it. I do like it. I just... Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you bit... Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, bye. Bye.